Hello and welcome to the lecture on the heart. So this is the lecture portion of the class. There you see a cool little flow of the uh, blood through the chambers of the heart and out to the body. That'll be of use to you. I'm waiting for the next screen to pop up because it's slow. Come on. All right. So where is it? It's located here in the middle of your thorax in a chamber called the mediastinum. And uh, the mediastinum is within the larger thoracic chamber, which is, as you remember from ANP1, within the ventral body cavity. Uh, <clears throat> this 250 to 350 grams, it's like about a third of a pound, plus or, plus or minus, and it varies depending on the person. There are some membranes that surround it, which you've probably seen in the lab portion, but uh, here they are again. There's a membrane called the pericardium, which if you look over here, uh, this whole thing, this is all uh, technically pericardium, all right? There's a fibrous layer right there. There's a serous layer right here. And <clears throat> these guys are both uh, what are called parietal pericardium. So parietal means it's stuck to the outside of the chamber, or sorry, to the inside of the chamber outside of the heart. And if you follow this little layer right here this is parietal uh, pericardium and then I, it folds around and now it's uh, a visceral epicardium uh, and they call that layer the epicardium just in general this stuff in between is the pericardial cavity and there is fluid in there serous fluid further deeper we go we get this layer right here this is the cardiac muscle called the myocardium and then on the inside of the chambers lies a simple squamous epithelium layer called the uh, endocardium. <clears throat> Next slide. Ooh, fast. Uh, all right, the chambers themselves. You've got two atria which are located superior, so above the ventricle. So these guys right here that I'm kind of surrounding, that is the left atrium, this is the right atrium. And uh, below that are the ventricles. Let's talk about these atria in sequence here. The right atrium, this side, remember we're looking at it from an anatomical viewpoint. The right atrium gets blood from this guy right here, which is the superior vena cava, and this one down here, which is the inferior vena cava. So this, they return blood flow, blood to the heart from the body. So from the head and shoulders, and from the abdomen and legs, etc. The the left atrium over here gets blood back from the heart, uh, sorry, from the lungs. We'll, I'll trace through the blood flow here in a minute, so it'll make sense. But uh, here's the ventricles again. We've got a right ventricle, which gets blood from the right atrium, a left ventricle, which gets blood from the left atrium. Notice that the walls of the left side are a lot thicker. So the septum right here uh, and the outer wall of the left <clears throat> ventricle are thicker because they're they're having to do the pumping out to the system. They're pumping out to the uh, to the body and, and to the head and shoulders and stuff via this aorta. And you can see I've outlined that here. Right ventricle pumps to the pulmonary trunk, which goes out to the lungs. Left ventricle pumps to the aorta, which goes out to the system, out to the body. And you see those different circuit names there. Inside of the heart, and I'll just go to this next page here, you'll see uh, things called trabeculae carnae, which are these little ridges, and papillary muscles, which are these little bumps. But you should be able to see it better on this. So I'll kind of go over it right here. <clears throat> if you're going to trace blood flow through the heart, uh, you can start anywhere because it's a cycle, right? It's a big circuit. But we'll start here in these vena cava. So I'm just going to roll, roll through it right here. Blood in the vena cava enters the right atrium. The right atrium uh, drains blood into the right ventricle couple of things you might notice here is that fossa ovalis, which was it's a little depression on the inner uh, wall, in the medial wall of the right atrium, and that's remnants from a, a embryonic hole that used to connect the two. But, getting ahead of myself. So blood goes from right atrium to right ventricle. Here we see these, this is the valve right here, this is the uh, tricuspid valve or right atrioventricular valve. These little cables right here are called chordae tendinae. <coughs> These little bumps, these little papillae, are called papillary muscles. You see them over here as well. Uh, blood is in the right ventricle. It's going to go out through the uh, 
pulmonary semi-lunar valve, which you see right there, into the pulmonary trunk, which branches into pulmonary arteries, and goes off to the lungs to get oxygenated. When it comes back from left and right lungs, it's going to come in through these pulmonary veins. Now, you may notice that the pulmonary veins are red and the pulmonary arteries are blue. Artery doesn't mean oxygenated. Artery means goes away from the heart. So obviously this is deoxygenated blood going away from the heart to get oxygenated out here in the lungs. Once it's oxygenated, it's going to come back towards the heart through veins into the left atrium. From the left atrium, you go into the left ventricle and you got the same structures here. From the left ventricle, you're going to pump it out and you kind of see it hiding in here. This is that aortic semilunar valve sneaking up in there. So the blood's going to go out here through the aorta, and you'll learn about all these other blood vessels later. But suffice it to say that you need to know the main ones around the heart right now. So superior and inferior vena cava, pulmonary trunk, pulmonary arteries, pulmonary veins, aorta. And that's all for this video.